Yes. Emmy, uh, 23. Okay. <laughs> you see this sleigh? Ash blonde. Y'all want this sleigh? <laughs> Get this sleigh. So these are her bundles that have been colored by Ungo. By Ungo, of course. I'll show you the closure later, but this is the color we're about to go. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Let's get it, baby. Let's get it. So exactly. today, today we are doing a lace closure quick weave. So if you are looking to get one or you thought about it or you just interested, stay tuned. Because we about to slay. Period. Okay, gang, let's jump right into this lace. So we're going to proceed with braiding down the hair so that we can get that foundation for this quick weave started. And I've already parted off that section where I want her part to lay. Kimmy does have a low hairline, so this will be a challenge. But, of course, we're still going to make it look as natural as possible because, of course, this is lace. Um, but she does have a 5x5 five five, um, 613 blonde closure. And she has two, no. I apologize. She has three bundles of 22 that she got from Ally Pearl. And I did do a coloring video on this particular hair color. So if you're interested in that, I will link that in the description box below. Right now, we're just proceeding with the braid down. And I will show you right here in this clip that I am putting a little free spray over on the hairline to push that hair back. So once I lay the cap down and I put that protection on it, it's all out of the way. So you just want to blow that on cool. And push it back and then proceed to braid the rest of the hair so just continue to watch guys and here is the finished product so the hair is braided it's flat and your foundation is ready to get slayed so right now you want to grab your black strips this is for extra protection. I always use black strips when I do my quick weaves because I just feel as if it protects the hair fully. So I'm going to spray a little free spray on the opposite side and push those hairs back before putting the black strips on. And um, as I lay those black strips, I'm just going to lay them in the position where I want, where I know the tracks will be glued. I'm not going to lay it where the closure is going to be laid because, of course, we're going to have that new cap going over it. I'm a visual learner, so I'm just going to let you guys watch me put the caps, I mean the black strips on because it's kind of hard to explain, but you want to make sure that you get your client to hold the beginning and end, and you're just going to fold it, you know, as you go around the perimeter of her head, and of course, just make it work. You just want to make sure all of the braids are covered with the paper before putting the, um, the nude cap on, so just continue to watch, and I do have another video where I did a quick weave. Um, that I can link down below so that if you don't understand it fully here, you can go and get more details on that video. Right now, I'm just putting that new cap on. And as you can see, I get my client to move her hand as I get to each side. So you're going to pull it all the way down on her hairline and you're going to cut that ear out so that you can get that lace. I mean, I'm sorry that cap laid <laughs> i'm already ready to lay the lace get that cap laid right there around the ear so you take your shears and you're going to cut a little hole and of course you want to pull the ear out be sure not to cut the client ear so take your time so you want to get your thread and you want to sew down the back of that new cap um, it does help with longevity of the quick weave when you sew it down in the back so i honestly would recommend you sew that back part down. You don't have to, it's optional, but I recommend it. Um, so now you're gonna take your free spray and you're gonna go all over the cap. Of course, you wanna put a little bit on that hairline in the front so that the new cap can stay laid um, for the positioning of the lace closure. I'm gonna use a little bit of that Robert Diamond um, protecting shield on the side where I know the tracks will be laid. Um, just for that extra protection. I don't need um, any on the opposite side because of course that's where the closure will be laid So right now you're just going to take your shears and cut that Cap around the hairline you want to be careful with this because you don't want to cut your client But you definitely want to get as close to that cap as possible 
so that you don't have excess cap showing. So you want to cut it all the way around the perimeter of her head. And then you're going to proceed to putting the Ruby Kisses makeup on. So I prefer cream foundation or powder because it just stays in place and it doesn't look messy. So, and Ruby Kisses to me is just the bomb anyway when it comes down to putting any makeup on your lace and on your um, cap. So I'm going to proceed to putting the 91% alcohol on the towel. I prefer to use the towel. Um, that's just my preference because throughout that um, installation, I'll use that towel to clean the um, glue off of the rat tail cone that I use to lay it down. And that's just something that I do. Um, so you want to take your closure and you want to position it properly because you're going to have to cut those end parts of that closure if you want that lace to lay properly. So you're going to get your client to hold it as you prepare to lay it properly and you're going to cut those little end pieces off and as you'll see I'll show you in this clip where I'm going to part it off and cut it. Always double check your work just to be sure because of course you can't replace putting that piece back on that lace so you want to make sure that you check the positioning before cutting that lace and of course if it's properly so you're going to get your client to hold that side as you make sure you pulled it down properly and it's in place so it's looking good and you're going to proceed to go to the other side so you're going to do the same exact thing you're going to part it off and you're going to make sure it's positioned properly and then you're going to cut Again, I'm double checking because before I sew down this closure, I want to make sure it's in the proper position. Um, and you want that to be right there in front of that new cap. So right now I'm about to pull back that lace just a little bit to make sure it's taut. And then we're going to proceed to sewing it down. I like to take two threads, one on one side and one on the opposite to make sure that it is laid flat. So you're going to see me do this in that next clip. Just continue to watch guys. Now we will proceed to putting the tracks in. You want to grab your bonding glue. And I like to use 30 seconds. That's not my favorite. And um, right here at this bottom row, I'm going to double those tracks. So as I, as I measure, I'm going to cut them and I'm going to show you that they are doubled. And then we're going to proceed to lay the tracks down. I do like to take my pump it up spritz and spray that cap so that that glue can stick um, and you don't have to blow dry it as much so but it definitely helps with it sticking faster than it normally would without the spritz so you just want to proceed to laying the tracks from ear to ear and then you're going to start taking those tracks from the back of that closure towards the front of her hairline this particular client was going for a full look, so you will see me doubling most of the tracks towards the back. I did single a few, but um, I'm a, I mainly double everything um, until I got towards the top and I start singling the tracks. So now I'm going towards the side and I'm angling it because I don't want that much hair on the left side of her head.
So I am still doubling, but I am about to switch over and start singling those tracks so that they can be flat as possible. And you will notice that I am going to start grabbing those tracks that has the brown um, roots at the top of it because I want that closure and those tracks to blend in together, but I did not want that brown root throughout the whole entire head. So we only wanted it towards the closure. We are now about to proceed to laying that lace closure. This is a five by five and I will be using ghost spun. Um, I did use a uh, protectant, but um, I forgot the camera wasn't recording on that particular part, but I used the protectant by Walker's tape and I'll link that down below. Um, you do want to use the scalp protectant when doing this guys. So yes, I did use one. I just forgot to cut the camera on to record that part. But I will link it in the description bar down below. So um, I like to use three coats, um, sometimes four, depending on the client. So right now you'll just see I'm just laying those coats and I'm making sure that they are very clear before moving on to that next coat. And as you can see, it's drying in pretty fast. So again, I am using ghost bun glue. This is my last coat and it's always good to make sure that you spread it evenly so that you can get your glue to turn clear just like mine is. If you don't spread it evenly, you will notice that it will be white still. Um, and if you lay it down, it'll still be white. So be sure to allow it to dry clear. As you can see, it's clear. Now it's time to lay it. And what I'm gonna do is I like to cut it in the middle so that way I can put pressure on both sides by splitting it. So I'm going to put pressure on it but you don't want to just press it. You want to put just a little bit of pressure on it and, you know, melt that lace. And I like to use the blow dryer on warm or cool. It doesn't matter. I like to use um, Alpha G Foaming Lotion to put on the um, hairline and push it back. So once I tie it down, it can help mold it in place. Um, and I like to mold it because it just helped melt that lace into the glue. So what I'm doing right now is I'm taking my blow dryer and just kind of directing the hair where I wanted to go. It's kind of like using the um, hot comb, but I like to use the blow dryer and then go over it with the hot comb just to ensure that all of the hair is going in the direction that I want it to flow. Now that we have molded everything, we can remove the band and voila, it's officially melted. So now it's time to cut that lace. You can use shears or a razor. Um, me personally, I can use either one. I do think that the razor give it more of a jagged look, but you can use the shears and do the same thing. You just want to twist your hand back and forth to give it that jagged look. So you'll see me switch over to the shears actually. Yep, just like that. There you go. Hairline is officially laid, so check. Let's proceed to giving her just a little bit of baby hair, not too much, just something really natural and soft. So we're gonna pluck it, cause it's extremely too much hair right there. You just wanna thin that out a little bit more. Grab that same razor that you used to cut the lace off with and just cut the baby hair is really short. Um, the shorter the baby hairs are, the better. I think it looks more natural. Um, and now I'm just going to go in and define that part. I used a little bit of that um, Sebastian's hairspray. Um, that's one of my favorite hairsprays. It's not too hard. It's not too crunchy. It's just really soft. And I use it on the hairline sometimes as well. But you just want to go in and define that part. And um, I am going to use a little bit, of make, little bit of makeup to help just make it a little bit more crisp. But right now we're going to proceed. We're using a little bit of the Got To Be Glue Gel to lay that baby hair down. I do want to add that I do use a little bit of mousse with the gel as I lay it. Um, I don't know why I use this technique. I just feel like it gives it more of that 
I don't know, it's just give it something. I can't put my hands on it. It's just give it something. So I do mix the two a little bit as I'm putting it on. And then, of course, like I said, I use that same spray to tie that hairline down. So as the baby hair melts, I am going to go off camera and do her makeup and add some lashes just to pop this look off and complete her whole birthday sleigh. So just <laughs> wait for the drip, wait for the drip. Oop, there it goes. Hey. So revealing of the baby hair. So the baby hair definitely added just a little bit of more spiff to this hair doing this look. And as you can see, she is feeling herself, honey. Yes, she is feeling herself. Attitude is already changing immediately. As I mentioned earlier, I am going to add makeup to that part just to make it look a little bit more defined. Um, yeah, just a little bit more defined. We need that definition. So um, just continue to watch, guys. We're about to go ahead and pop these one curls in. And if you don't know how to one curl, I am going to demonstrate a little bit, but I am going to speed it up as well because I didn't want this video to be extremely long. But I do show you in some parts of this clip how I one curl this hair and what tools I use. So I'm just going to add some bio silk because it's bomb.com and you need it just a little bit though not a lot you don't want the hair to be way down so add that throughout the hair and then you're going to proceed to styling let's get it sis So as I one curl the hair, once I rope that hair around that one curl, I do tend to twist that one curl while it's in there just to kind of heat the curl up all the way throughout. And as you can see, I'm rotating. And then I hold it in my hand for like five to 10 seconds to allow it to cool before dropping that curl. Cause you want that curl to cool before you drop it. Otherwise it would be elongated a little bit longer than you would like. And for this look, we're going for volume. So I didn't really want it to be loose. I wanted the curl to have some def definition to it. So. I'm going to proceed to curling and as you can see I'm still twisting that one curler so that's just the technique that I use you don't have to do that you can just allow it to sit there but that's just something that I just use and do I don't know it's just I guess the tab way but yeah see that's a better look my arm is not in the way that time So throughout the back of her head, I had all the curls going the same way. But once I got to this particular side, I wanted the curls to have a little bit more um, height. Um, I'm not height, a little bit more volume. So I had the curls go forward and backwards, if that makes sense. So all of the curls wasn't going the same direction. And I did that purposely just to give me a little bit more volume in that particular area. Um, as you can see, my client is asleep, so she is very relaxed and enjoying herself. Um, but yeah, you just want to make sure you go forward and backward with the curls if you want that volume right there in the front and i am going to pull it out in the end just to give it a little bit more volume but you'll see just keep watching
Tea Game. Like, comment, subscribe. Positive vibes only. Thank you.